In this online lecture, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about CH stretchings and bendings and how they appear on the IR spectrum. And we'll talk about a few additional concepts that are related. But our key points are one, we want to make sure we understand that one, the greater the S character of a hybridized carbon, the stronger the bond, therefore the higher the wave number on the IR. We're also going to see two, it's a nice little rule of thumb here. We're going to see that SB3 hybridized carbons, their CH bonds, have absorption bands to the right of the 3000 mark, while the SB2 and SP hybridized carbon CH bonds have absorption bands to the left. It's a nice little rule of thumb to look at an IR and know this right away, and I'll show you how to use it. And the third thing we're going to see is that it's good to know that benzene rings have certain absorptions. We'll see them at around 1600 and between 1480 and 1500. This gives us a way to know right away if we have a benzene ring. And number four here, what we're going to see is that aldehyde CH bonds show absorption bands around 29 to 2600. And the last thing we want to get out of this lecture, number five, is that NH bonds. Where do they absorb? We're going to see that we get a stretch near 32 to 35 and a bend at around 1600. So let's begin by going back to our chart here. Remember, on this generalized chart, we have this, the CH stretches or bendings should be around 2700 to 3300 and the intensity is medium. But that's a very broad range. What we want to do is get a more detailed look at the different types of CH bonds. For instance, let's first compare these right here. Notice these are three CH bonds that you see in front of you. But the carbons that these hydrogens are connected to have different hybridizations. If you remember, if it's a triply bonded carbon, it means the carbon is sp hybridized. A doubly bonded carbon would be sp2 hybridized. And let's say that carbon on the bottom is just a regular alkane carbon. Let's say he's sp3 hybridized. And what we're focusing on here is, remember, the CH bond, this bond right here. The first thing we should know is that if you remember from Orgo 1, this is a principle we've seen before here, that if you measure the lengths of these CH bonds, it should be that the sp3 hybridized carbon has the longest CH bond, and the sp hybridized carbon would have the shortest. Let's remember why that's so. Let's go back. Let's compare directly the sp hybridized carbon to the sp3. Remember, the sp hybridized carbon, his hybridization is half s, half p. So he has a lot of what's called, member S character in his sp hybridized orbital. And remember, S orbitals are spherical. P orbitals are more stretched out and dumbbell shaped. So this would be roughly the geometry of his sp orbital. Whereas the sp3 hybridized carbon, his hybridized sp3 orbital would look something like this. Notice it's more stretched out and longer because sp3 hybridized orbitals have more P character. Remember, they're one part S, three part P. So when we go to bond the hydrogen in the sp hybridized carbon, this is what it would look like here. Whereas bonding the hydrogen in the sp3 carbon, it would be like this. So the sp hybridized carbon has a shorter bond simply because the orbital is more blunted. So let's go back to our chart here again. That's why the bottom one is the longest bond, and the sp2 hybridized carbon CH bond is in the middle of those two. We should also know, and this is also a concept from either general chemistry or organic chemistry, that the relationship between bond length and bond strength, if you remember correctly, this is the trend right here. Longer bonds are weaker, and shorter bonds are stronger. So the trend is, the sp3 hybridized carbon CH bond would be the weakest bond, and the sp hybridized carbon CH bond would be therefore the strongest bond out of the three. And remember, we saw before the relationship between bond strength and wave number on the IR. If you remember correctly, this was the trend. The stronger the bond, the higher the wave number, which means the CH bond in the sp hybridized carbon would have an absorption peak at a higher wave number relative to the sp3 carbon CH bond. All we're trying to understand here is why that's the case. And again, it goes back to bond strength, and the bond strength can be learned from the bond length.
In fact, here are the exact numbers. Notice the sp hybridized carbon CH bond absorbs at around 3300. And notice the sp2 hybridized carbon CH bond around 31 to 3020. And lastly, that sp3 hybridized CH bond 2960 to 2580. These numbers reflect that trend that the sp hybridized carbon CH bond would have the highest wave number out of the three options here. Now, one way to remember these truths, let's go to a typical IR spectrum right here. A nice little rule of thumb here is locate the 3000 mark right here on the IR, like this. From this reference line, what we want to notice is that CH bonds that are from sp3 hybridized carbons will appear to the right of this line. Remember, they're the lowest wave number. Whereas sp2 hybridized carbon CH bonds, let's look at another one here, would appear to the left of the 3000 mark. And this would therefore also be true for sp hybridized carbons with CH bonds. So this gives us a way immediately to determine what kind of CH bonds we have. Let's look at the IR for a specific example. This is the IR for this molecule right here. It's got a benzene ring and an ethyl group. Let's focus on the ethyl group. Notice those carbons in the ethyl group are sp3 hybridized, so we should see sp3 hybridized carbon CH stretches. So boom, right here, this is our 3000 mark, and sure enough, we got stretches right here that are corresponding to, look at the molecule in the upper right, these blue hydrogens right here. But this molecule also has CH bonds where the carbon is sp2 hybridized. That means we should see CH bonds to the left of the 3000 mark here. These peaks would correspond to, look at the molecule in the upper right here, to this CH bond right here. Notice the carbon in the benzene ring is sp2 hybridized. So that's why we're observing that CH stretch to the left of the 3000 mark. And why not? While we're looking at this, let's notice some other important peaks. The peak right here would be the C double bond C peak. And another important observation are these two peaks right here. These two peaks correspond to the benzene ring. The first one is at around 1600. The other one is at around 1480 to 1500. These peaks are usually obvious on an IR spectrum, so it's great to find them and know right away that we have a benzene ring. Especially if you're taking an orgo exam that's multiple choice. You see these two peaks, you could rule out any answers that don't have a benzene ring in them. Now let's focus on another type of CH bond. Remember, the functional group here is called an aldehyde that you see here on the right. That carbon there is not only doubly bonded to the oxygen, it's also singly bonded to that green hydrogen. He is our aldehyde hydrogen. Where do we expect to see this particular CH peak? Well, let's reference it again to our 3000 mark. Right here, these little peaks right here, those correspond to the CH peak in an aldehyde. These peaks are usually plain and obvious. So when you see them way over here, that much to the right of the 3000 mark, it's definitely strong evidence that your molecule might be an aldehyde. Let's look at even another example. Look at this IR spectrum right here. This is for the molecule you'll see there in the lower right of the spectrum. This molecule is an amine. For this example, instead of focusing on the CH bond, let's focus on the NH bond, which is the bond between the nitrogen in the molecule and this green hydrogen right here. What we'll see in the IR spectrum for this molecule are these stretches right here. Right about at the 3500 mark there, you should see two little peaks like that, which are responsible for those NH bonds. Notice these are definitely way to the left of the 3000 mark. Remember, this is also the region where we see absorption peaks for OH bonds. However, notice the difference here. The NH absorption peaks are narrow, where remember the OH bond peaks are more broad. Another absorption peak attributable to an amine right here is this absorption peak right here. This peak corresponds to the bending of the NH bond, whereas clearly the other one corresponds to the stretching of the NH bond. So if we suspect we have an amine, these are the two regions we should look. And since we're on the subject, CH bonds also have bending absorption peaks. 
and they're usually right here. These absorption peaks are attributable to the CH bonds in our molecule in the lower right. It'd be the C bonds connected to those red hydrogens. We usually see these absorption peaks right about here, about the 1400 mark. So there we have it, knowing CH bonds in a little further detail. So what are our key points? What are we supposed to get out of this? Remember, we saw that number one, the greater the S character of a hybridized carbon, the stronger the bond, therefore the higher the wave number on the IR spectrum. We saw number two, that SB3 CH bonds have absorption bands to the right of the 3000 mark, while the SB2 and SP have absorption bands to the left. It's a nice quick reference. And three, we saw benzene rings typically have absorption bands at 1600 and around the 1500 to 1480 mark. We also saw an example of a CH aldehyde bond. We know roughly where they absorb, 2600 to 2900. Notice those are the smallest wave numbers out of all the ones that we saw. And fifth point right here, NH bonds show an absorption stretch near 32 to 35, which is where we see the OH bonds, but remember they're more narrow. And we can also expect to see a Ben peak at the 1600 mark.